Hello AS, welcome to your second and also final, simultaneously final um, biopsychology video. Today we are going to look at neurons. You need to know the structure of neurons, so what they're made up of. You need to know the function of them, so what do the different neurons do. And you need to know something called synaptic transmission, which is how the neurons communicate. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> So, uh, there are three different types of neurons. Last week we looked at the nervous system, so that was a huge structure of the nervous system. We looked at it, how it's structured, uh, central, peripheral, etc., etc. The neurons are the next kind of step down. So you know the big chunks, what the neuro, the nervous system are built, uh, uh, nervous system and how it's structured. Now you know what it's made of, and it's made of. So neurons are considered the building blocks of the nervous system, and they transmit information, messages, chemically and electronically. Within the neuron, it is electronic, and then there are very very small gaps, which are chemical, which is neurotransmission, which is what we're going to look at uh, in a lot more detail later on. There are sensory, motor and relay. Those three are named on the spec, so you need to be able to tell me about those three types of neurons. So, first of all, there is a sensory neuron, which looks like the neuron below. And as you can see just down here, this is some examples of some receptors in the skin, which is obviously a sensory um, structure. It's uh, The skin, as you know, senses hot, cold, different things like that. So there's receptors in the skin. And they take information, so sensory uh, neurons take information from the peripheral nervous system, so sensory information from the edge of the nervous system to the central nervous system, so from the skin to the brain to the spinal cord. Um, they have very, very long dendrites, so the dendrite, the information comes in here, it goes all the way down, dendrite goes down here, till we get to the cell body. So dendrites take information from either the neighbouring cell or from uh, receptors in the skin, all the way down to the cell body, which is here. And we will look at this in more detail. And then um, very, very short axons. The axons take the message from the cell body to the synaptic terminals, the synaptic endings here. But it's really key, just remember, long dendrites, short axons. Sensory information from the skin, so from the peripheral nervous system to the sensory central nervous system. Relay neurons or interneurons, dead easy. Um, you generally find them in the brain and spinal cord, they allow sensory and motor neurons to communicate. So they, um, sensory and motor neurons can't directly communicate, so there needs to be sensory or interneurons, which goes in between, which uh, uh, continues to pass the message along. They have both short dendrites and short axons, so they're quite short here. And finally, motor neurons. So they take information from the central nervous system to the muscles. And it's really important that you are aware of the difference between these because they will come up in exam questions. Motor neurons, of course, they control movement. Uh, so <coughs> information about movement comes from the brain. You decide you're going to move, and then you move pretty much most of the time. Obviously, there's the odd exception to that um, with reflexes and things. But it comes from the sensory, and it goes to the muscles. Whereas, of course, uh, central nervous system then goes to the muscles, where, of course, sensory information or um, sensory neurons take the information from the peripheral nervous system, so from the edge to the central nervous system. If you're feeling things in your back and in your brain in particular, then that is not good news. You wouldn't be, sen uh, central nervous system isn't sending sensory information out, it is receiving sensory information through sensory neurons, and the central nervous system is sending out m um, motor control um, movements from the central nervous system to the muscles through motor neurons. And motor neurons have very, very long axons, so as you can see here, very short dendrites, cell body, and then a big long axon here. So anything before the cell body taking the information is a dendrite, anything after the cell body is an axon. And then there's some extension information, so if you feel like, wow, I know far too much already, or this is just this is um, far too much, then you don't need to take any more on. Um, but there is a synaptic transmission in muscle contractions, and we are going to come back to this, so if this makes no sense, even if you think you want to do the um, extension, return to it after we've talked about s uh, synaptic transmission in um, at the end of the... Um, the pro uh, the video, but synaptic transmission is what gets muscles to contract. So there are very very small gaps, which when we look at them in synaptic transmission will be to do we call synapses. The small gaps between the um, terminal buttons in the um, 
neuron and the muscles and here they're called neuromuscular junctions so there's very very small gaps that neurotransmitters which are chemicals jump across um, called isocholine is um, isotylocholine <coughs> maybe and um, if um, and it works with excitory so if there's there a certain type of neurotransmitter if they're excitory they help the muscles contract and if they're inhibitory then they help the muscles relax and that will make more sense when you've looked at um, synaptic transmission so do return and consider that but only if you're really going for the high level stuff I would say and then the structure of neurons so you need to tell, be able to tell me about sensory motor and relay neurons and what they do but you also need to tell me about the structure of them so we've got dendrites here um, and as you can see, the, the cell body is here with a very, very long axon, so it must be um, a motor neuron. Um, you've got the dendrites here. Dendrites take information from neighbouring neurons. So the information, they are the receivers. The information comes in from neighbouring neurons um, onto the dendrites. The, ce the cell body or the soma is just here, um, and that contains all the genetic DNA um, and oh sorry, it contains the nucleus, which contains the genetic DNA of the cell. Which so hopefully you're aware of those from GCSE. Then the axon here takes the action potential. So neurons take electrical impulses um, along uh, along them. So when, whenever a message is in a neuron, it is an, an electrical impulse. And um, the axon takes the electrical impulse along the cell. Um, it is covered by a myelin sheath, so this yellow thing here, uh, or we call it a myelinated axon, so a myelin sheath uh, which protects the axon, and motor neuron disease is an example of the myelin sheath breaking up on your axons. And then the nodes of Ranvia, which are just here, are little gaps in the myelin sheath which help the, uh, the message pass even uh, quick, uh, very quickly, it jumps between the nodes, which speeds the um, the electrical impulse up, jumping across the gap. Um, the myelin sheath, just so you know, it's a fatty layer. It's a fatty layer of tissue which protects the axon. Uh, oh, and then we have Schwann cells, which um, help make um, the myelin sheath in or maintain the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system you don't have to know that's one you don't have to know about but you can be aware of in the peripheral nervous system the swan cells um, help make the myelin sheath and then we have the terminal buttons which pass the information onto the next dendrite and in the you the cut sword so many different things synaptic terminals terminal buttons axon terminals I don't mind what you call them uh, but just here at the end is where the synapse is, which is where we look at synaptic transmission and how that happens. Synaptic transmission, the axon uh, or the terminal buttons transfer the information across. So it comes in here through the dendrites, goes along the axon, and then comes to the, um, the terminal buttons here, um, where there's a synapse, which is a small gap, and they pass the message on to the next cell's dendrites, and so on and so on. So you need to know all about those structures. You could be asked to label them, you could be asked to describe and you'll see the different types of exam questions. Synaptic transmissions are, is this is how synapse, synapses communicate. Within synapses, so in a synapse on the axon, the um, impulse, it's in an action potential and it is electrical, an electrical nerve impulse. So when we talk about nerve impulses, they are electrical. Whereas if we're transferring between um, synapses, then it is a chemical because there's a gap here. So the synapse, sorry, between uh, neurons, between each neuron, um, there is a gap and that gap is called the synapse so between the neurons it becomes chemical because as you know electricity can't jump um, through gaps it has to have a conductor it can't move through spaces so it changes from an electrical impulse into a chemical impulse here and that's how they communicate so synaptic transmission is something you need to be aware of as well and in your vid in your books if you can talk about the step-by-step -step process so the action potential runs down the axon of the presynaptic neuron and this is so 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 important you must call it the presynaptic the synapse is here this is before the synapse and this is the postsynaptic uh, neuron again you can call them whatever you want presynaptic terminals and so on but the easiest one is presynaptic neuron and postsynaptic neuron so the action potential runs down the presynaptic neuron where it tri triggers these little sacs here of neurotransmitters which are called vesicles. The vesicles are little sacs that hold the neurotransmitter which is the chemical messenger. The vesicles go to the edge of the presynaptic neuron and they release the neurotransmitters into 
the synaptic gap or the synapse. These neurotransmitters then float around and they bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. And in a minute we're going to talk about what, how that affects the postsynaptic neuron, but for the moment all you need to know is that the postsynaptic neuron then either fires or um, is more or less likely to fire. Once that happens, they are released back into the synaptic gap and then they are reabsorbed in a process called reuptake into back into the presynaptic vesicles ready for the process to start all over again. Now, I'm going to talk you through that again, that'll be on another slide when it's visual and there is also a video, an additional video I would like you to watch that I've tagged on um, uh, Moodle as well. Okay. Uh, if you want to take it a step further, when we're to, um, in a minute, uh, in psychopathology we are going to look at SSRIs, which are a type of drug that block um, reset the transporters, they block the process of reuptake to make more neurochemical uh, neurotransmitter um, available in the synapse which then makes um, the synapse, it has a bigger effect on the synapse, uh, the postsynaptic neuron as well so that blocks the receptors making more n neurotransmitter available so it can continually bind with the, with the receptors more and have the desired effect of that neurotransmitter so in the case of serotonin um, it makes us feel better, it makes us feel happier, increases our mood Okay. so um, as you can see there, you've got the action potential which runs down the presynaptic neuron. It, this triggers ve vesicles to move to the edge of the presynaptic membrane, releases the neurotransmitters into the synaptic gap where they bind with receptors on the postsynaptic neuron. And depending whether they are excitatory or inhibitory, which we'll look at in a minute, the postsynaptic neuron may or may not fire or is more, more or less likely to fire. After that, the neurotransmitter is released um, by the receptor back into the synaptic gap and it's reabsorbed into the vesicles in the presynaptic neuron in a process called reuptake through transporters. Now between this image and that information you have everything you need however there is not enough information on that alone you need to listen there's a couple of pieces of terminology that I've used that haven't been included such as transporters uh, I don't mention pre and post synaptic neuron every single time so just make sure you have the full detail of how neurotransmission works and then finally there is summation and this is the last thing on biopsychology so summation where I said before as I'm uh, sort of a little bit vague about when the um, a neurotransmitter binds to the receptors what happens in the postsynaptic neuron well that all depends on a process called summation okay so we've got excitatory neurotransmitters which make the postsynaptic neuron more likely to fire an action potential and pass that information on to the next neuron and the next neuron and so on that message um, and we have inhibitory neurotransmitters which makes the postsynaptic neuron less likely to fire an action potential and when we talked about muscles contracting excitatory neurotransmitters make it more likely that that message um, will be passed on to say contract that muscle move that hand away from that hot plate move um, move away from the uh, the window if you're cold it makes your muscles contract and move whereas if they're inhibitory neurotransmitters it's less likely they'll fire an action potential and that is when your muscles relax because they are no longer receiving the message to contract okay postsynaptic neuron uh, excitatory neurotransmitters less likely uh, more likely to fire inhibitory neurotransmitters less likely to fire and then this is the process of summation and you're about to see possibly the most amazing diagram that you have ever seen so the, at any one time in the synapse there are both inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters floating around and their influence is summed so that just means essentially added together but you use one, I've underlined all the really important terms that you need to use the influence is summed which is added together and if the net effect on the postsynaptic neuron is inhibitory the neuron is less likely to fire if the net effect is excitatory the neuron is more likely to fire. So essentially, if there are more inhibitory neurons, less likely to fire. If there are more excitatory neurons, more likely to fire. 
and th the reason that I've underlined these terms and I've just done it so this is how easy it is to do when you talk about excitatory neurotransmitters you say they make the postsynaptic neurons so you must mention you can't say because what I find most students say make it more likely to fire and then you miss the two key bits so it makes the postsynaptic neuron more likely to fire and action potential so not you need to say what it what it is and what it makes it do so it makes the it makes it what the postsynaptic neuron if we're talking about an inhibitory less likely to fire what an action potential which is the electrical impulse in the next neuron and this is it are you ready for it this is the most amazing diagram that you have ever seen so i couldn't really find one that was good enough we've got the presynaptic neuron here the postsynaptic neuron here and of course the synapse in the middle now we from the vesicles that i haven't drawn on many different types of neurotransmitter have been released at once if you think that all the ones that are blue and this is purely for di um, diagram purposes if all the ones that are blue are excitatory and all the ones that are yellow inhibit uh, are inhibitory if you look in the synapse there are much less um, if we look if we sum the um, inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters then we would say the net effect in this one particularly if you look at the receptors the net effect is excitatory because there are more excitatory neurotransmitters particularly bound to the postsynaptic neuron so if the net effect was summed um, so the sorry the um, excitatory and neuro inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters were summed, the net effect was found to be excitatory and therefore the postsynaptic neuron was more likely to fire an action potential and that is all it is. Adding up all of the neurotransmitters, the different effects and f identifying which effect there is more of which is the net effect. So there's more excitatory, more likely to fire um, an action potential. The reason I highlight this because of the examiner's report, the very first year this AS spec came out, there was a, a question on summation came up and horrified everybody. Uh, the examiner's report identified how awful it was, and as you know, if students aren't very good at something, they put it in again and again to check that teachers are teaching it well. So you need to be really confident in this. There were some issues with accuracy of knowledge, and, me and many answers were very confused. So this was for um, explaining the process of summation, or uh, explain the process of inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters in uh, neurotransmission. So um, some students suggested that synapses were firing. It is not the synapse that fires. It is the pre- or the post-synaptic neuron. The neuron fires, not the synapse. The synapse is just a gap. Um, or the excitation, uh, so excitatory neurotransmitters cause more neurotransmitters and inhibit inhibition cause less. It is not the amount of neurotransmitters. It is whether the postsynaptic neuron is more or less likely to fire an action potential. So this is why I say why you have to mention that it's this pre or post the postsynaptic neuron and you have to mention the action potential part otherwise you lose lots of marks. And then examiner's report as it says at the simplest level you need to be aware that transmission is halted if there is more inhibitory effects or it can proceed if there are more excitatory effects. So passing that message on of contracting your muscles is more it uh, proceeds if there is more excitatory neurotransmitters whereas it is halted and therefore the muscles relax if there are more inhibitory neurotransmitters okay so if you just make sure you watch the other video that I tag here it's called two minutes um, neurochemistry dead and simple two minutes long just to make you sure about neurotransmitter neurotransmission what you need to be aware of you need to be able to tell me the function of motor sensory and relay neurons you need to be able to tell me the structure of all neurons so dendrites axon etc etc so how they're made up you need to tell me the process of synaptic transmission and you need to tell me about summation please do not be put off by these they are all and I know it probably won't feel like it for some of you some of you might be panicking slightly they are all simple concepts but there are a lot of them we will go over them several times and work them out okay you will be absolutely fine by the end of the year last year this is the thing that AS students were most confident with because as you know we go over things over and over again any questions please do get in touch otherwise well done for completing biopsychology